just uh, this time last year, you were pretty well set with your combinations on, on who to play. Is it different right now? I mean, just kind of how are you sorting through everything uh, with with some of the guys like Kamani Johnson and Wade coming on late? Yeah, I mean, I think we're still a work in progress, you know, much like we were last year as far as, you know, what offensive sets, who we're going to. Um, you know, everybody in college athletics right now is 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 – figuring things out on the fly as well. So, um, you know, certainly we feel uh, that we've had a good body of work to evaluate uh, everybody. We've got a lot of film, assistant coaches, support staff, everybody's been, uh, the guys that run numbers for us have been running numbers, looking at plus minuses, uh, looking at everything uh, to try to figure out, you know, what's the best unit to put out there, looking at matchups, uh, in particular with Mississippi State on exactly what we have to do or try to do, um, you know, because it's always a game of matchups, whether it's, you know, a, a baseball hitter and a pitcher, whether it's a wide receiver and a defensive back, it's the same thing with us trying to figure out, you know, the strengths of Mississippi State and how we can try to eliminate or take those away to the best of our ability. And, and, uh, and then on the flip side, how we can take advantage of a certain matchup as well. Also, Adis Tony, is he okay physically? I mean, he just hasn't been the same player the last couple of day, games. Is there anything wrong with him or just, just a slump? Yeah, no, there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with him physically. He's had a couple of good practices since we've been back, um, you know, from the break. Thank you. Hodge? Yeah, Coach, what are your impressions so far of Mississippi State? What are the kind of the keys going into this game? Uh, really well coached. Uh, ben Holland does, a, you know, a great job. Uh, they go to their, you know, they have a lot of strengths, obviously. Uh, number one, Molinar is one of the best guards in the league. He's very good in pick and roll. Uh, he's good in isolation situations. He's excellent in transition. Uh, they're off guard. Moore is a left-hander who can shoot the ball, a transfer. Um, Jeffrey's 13 at the small forward. He's got really good athleticism. He can make threes. Um, Brooks, number 10 you know, transfer from North Carolina can play the four or the five for them. He's a really good pick and pop player. Uh, they do a good job of ducking in. Uh, their big guys um, are very physical on the offensive glass. Uh, even guys like Davis who come off the bench have an impact when they come in the game. Um, you know, and then they have, you know, a guy like Matthews, number four, who can play the, the, the power forward or the small forwards, very athletic and, and jumps in passing lanes. Um, so, you know, a, a really talented basketball team. I think they did a, a, as good a job as anybody in college basketball with the, uh, you know, with the, with the transfer market uh, this offseason. They got a lot of really competitive guys, and they have uh, a coach who gets his teams to play hard. And I also wanted to get your thoughts on Jackson Robinson. Seems to have come on really strong the last couple of games. Is, is that something you saw coming from him based on what you saw in practice? And, and is he a guy that could come on strong, you know, down the stretch, kind of like Jalen and Devo did last year? Yeah, I think, you know, Jackson's a guy that, uh, you know, when we, when we didn't get him, you know, the first go around, I was, you know, I was, I was uh, disappointed because I really liked Jackson talking to him on the phone, really enjoyed his, his mom. Um, you know, he actually was, was on our campus, you know, a few days before he committed, um, you know, and then when we, when we went back in the transfer market and he was, he was available, he was a guy that uh, we wanted because we saw a lot of upside. I think that his best basketball is way ahead of him. He's our youngest player on our team. Um, and so he's a guy that, um, you know, he kept working, uh, kept getting better in practice, um, liked the development of his, of his process because I think confidence becomes really important for a young player. Um, and his confidence wasn't affected early on by maybe playing when he didn't understand our offense or other guys that he was going to be playing with. So uh, his development's been awesome. Um, you know, now for, for our entire roster, uh, you know, you, you, you go into conference play. It doesn't matter what conference you are. You could be in the Mountain West and, or you could be in the SEC. Like, conference play is, is different. Uh, games are close. Games are competitive. Uh, talent level becomes much more 
uh, even across the board on a nightly basis. Uh, so for all of our guys, you know, everybody's got to play a little bit better. We got to, we got to continue to evolve as a team. Uh, but certainly Jackson um, is playing with great confidence right now. Um, and, you know, we're happy with this, with this progress for sure. Curtis. Hey, coach, did you feel like it was important or, or needed for the guys just to, to get a couple days off to refresh and recharge before the SEC season started? And then what have you seen from them in practice last couple of days? Yeah, I mean, we've had uh, we've had really good practices, really focused practices. Um, you know, I think that any time that, you know, you can get away and re recharge your battery, you know, whether whatever line of work you have, obviously, um, you know, for, for a college basketball uh, player, you, you know, you got the smallest break of any, of anybody on, on, on campuses across the country. Um, you know, it's a short window and when guys have to fly home and, and it's a three day break and there's travel both ways, but certainly for them to, to be with family and friends over, you know, over the holiday is really important, but we've, you know, we, uh, we've had really good practices, um, you know, and then we'll see if, if that carries over, um, you know, into the game against Mississippi State. And then you guys have had some some good neutral site games with some nice crowds. But this will be your first true road test of the season. And then thinking back to uh, the crowds being limited last year, it, it's been a while since you've been in that kind of environment. Is that something you guys have talked about the last couple of days or done anything in particular to prepare for? No, I mean, I think, you know, our guys have, I mean, we understand that, uh, you know, you go on the road, you got to, uh, you have to bring your A game. You got to limit turnovers. Uh, you've got to know the game plan inside and out. You got to know the opposition strengths and weaknesses. So, I mean, we're not, you know, playing crowd noise or anything like that in practice. Um, you know, you, you, you're, you're playing in the SEC. You've got road games. All nine road games will be extremely difficult, as is every home game. So, um you know, for some of our younger players, um, you know, certainly, you know, even Jalen and, and uh, you know, Devo, guys like that, um, last year, you know, they played, they haven't played in front, even the NCAA tournament. I mean, you're talking about crowds that were very limited. So uh, Jackson, those, those younger players, um, you know, have not played in front of, um, you know, crowds where, you know, maybe somebody like Chris, um, an older player has played in, in front of some big crowds, but even Stanley mentioned our, in our red and white game that, you know, that that was, that would be, be a really big crowd um, where he had played in his previous league um, that that red and white crowd, he made the comment of that. So, um, you know, we have to hope that, that Trey's, you know, playing on the road and, and guys like Chris that, 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 you know, helps us to some degree. Bob. Hey, Eric, hope, hope you're feeling a little bit better. I know you hadn't had the surgery yet, but um, hey, Danielle tweeted out a, a picture of you, I guess, from several years ago. I, I think it, she made reference to a torn Achilles. Um, could you give us the backstory now, like what, when that was and what happened and kind of what, what that experience was like? Um, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was four days before I was getting ready to coach the Venezuelan national team. And um, I took Michael to the uh, 24 hour fitness and told him to go sign his name up on the wall of pickup ball. And, and um, you know, if you, I told him, if you win, you stay, if you lose, you know, you got to sit out and I'll pick you up in a couple hours. I wanted him to, you know, play with guys, not just at his own, you know, that were on his own team, but to play with grown men to try to help him as a player. And he called, after I got back on the freeway and said, dad, can you come back and, and, and play? I signed your name up on the board. And so I came back, I had running shoes on and, uh, you know, thought I was just going to get a sweat. It got competitive and, uh, took a jab step, tore my Achilles. Uh, Danielle did research on the internet and there were people, not a lot, but there were people with the torn Achilles that, um, you know, let it rehab on its own. Um, we found a doctor that gave us instructions. I brought it over to Venezuela. They took the cast off virtually every day. 
and reset it on different angles. And I don't know what they did, but they, they lasered it. Um, probably a really dumb decision, but I knew if you had, <laughs> a, if you had Achilles surgery, you could not fly um, long distance because of blood clots. And I wanted to coach really bad and put, you know, coaching and, and career way ahead of uh, health. Um, you know, and, and obviously if you have an Achilles tear and it's completely torn, you let it heal out on its own. It turns into like spaghetti in your Achilles instead of being attached properly. And, and, um, you know, now I have the torn rotator cuff and, uh, you know, it's hard to sleep quite frankly, and hopefully, you know, it gets a little bit better, the pain. Um, you know, little it's hard on the road, especially because you can sleep in a chair at home upright. But on the road, I mean, I walked around Little Rock till four in the morning because I couldn't sleep. And hopefully this road trip, um, you know, can be a little bit more comfortable because it's it, it's it is painful. And so we'll, we'll see how it goes, um, you know game by game or day by day. Cause if, you know, if you get the surgery, it's going to, it's going to eliminate a lot of activity on the practice floor and a lot of demonstration. I think coaching is, you know, you do need to, to be active and demonstrate. And so we'll, you know, we'll see how, we'll see how it goes over the next week or so. Does that experience with your Achilles? I mean, Jalen said that you really haven't changed your coaching style. You're still coaching like you always have. Does that experience, I guess, painful as it was, um, does that help you through this? Like, Hey, I got through that. You know, I can get through this, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I think when you're coaching on crutches in a different country and half your team speaking a different language, <laughs> um, that's probably a little more problematic, but, um, you know, this is probably a little, a little bit more painful, just, uh, you know, especially at night. So again, I, you know, I know that meeting with the trainers and the doctors, we'd like to, we'd like to try to continue you know the way it is um but you know a shot hasn't really helped at all so you know i guess like i said i'll see how this road trip goes and and um from a sleep and then just kind of decide from there so you you, you took a cortisone shot or some kind of painkiller yeah something like that. i think yeah. it was steroid yeah and then um, I know you said you were doing a closeout drill with Trey and he fell on you. Is that what happened? Yeah. Yep. I walked out and uh, Trey was already into his closeout and, la <laughs> and landed on me. What, did you know right away, oh man, this is not good? Or did it, was it later? It's like, man, my shoulder's killing me or kind of what was it? No, it was pretty instant. I mean, I knew right away. I went over and told Matt, you know, I can't lift my arm. I mean, you know, I can move my arm now, um, up and down and, um, but yeah, when it happened, I couldn't, I couldn't lift it. I couldn't, you know, couldn't do anything with it, but you know, the movements, you know, fine, except certain directions. So that's not the guy you want landing on you. I can tell you that. Yeah. And then I saw your trainer tweet out, like you're doing good. So you're, are you doing daily work with him, you know, range of motion stuff or just trying to some rehab stuff or yeah i mean i think the thing they don't want you to do is you know they don't want that arm just to to get stiff and and i don't know what they call it dead arm or whatever but i mean i'm moving it and you know like i said the only real problem bob is is it is at night yeah well they need to be you need to get the hotels to put a like a nice recliner in your room that's probably not going to happen in any of the sec road hotels uh, well, yeah, I'm using a soon name. Well, a basketball-related question. Of, I mean, you started ten guys the last two games. So, are you still figuring out the, uh, the the lineups, or do you know and just don't want to say, or kind of what do you know what your rotation is going to be? Um, yeah, I think you know. I mean, I think in all honesty, Bob, it'll work. It's it'll, you know, like especially this next game, it'll just kind of work its way out on uh, you know on our rotation. So. Um, you know, I, I think it's it's pretty much across the board. If you look at, you know, I watch college games every night and uh, especially with the, you know, the movement that, that goes on, um, you know, and even, you know, Mississippi State, I mean, they have a really talented player in Rocket Watts and he's had, you know, some injuries and, and uh, 35, Tulu Smith has, 
as well. And so when, when stuff like that happens, you know, rotations are going to, are going to vary whether it's foul trouble or whatever. So, um, but yeah, we want to, you know, until we're playing exactly the way that we want to play, um, which you never know in a season, whether that's going to happen or not, or what, what point of the season that happens. So I think that, you know, as, as coaches, you're trying to get better, you're trying to improve. Um, so yes, yeah, certainly I think that, you know, we're still tinkering, um, you know, with the best combinations that we can put forth on a given night. Online has you covered for all the holiday season, more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with the promo code BELIEVE to receive your bonus. That's B L E A V to receive your bonus. And it's not just football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of all these amazing offers available for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports